powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. And God will concentrate on buying and losing. Hallelujah. One of the one of the key to success in life is the ability to exercise your spiritual authority. I said one of the keys to success in life is the ability to exercise your spiritual authority. And, and you cannot successfully uh, exercise that authority if you're not walking the knowledge of God's word. We have authority in the place of prayer we exercise that authority. Hallelujah. In the place of prayer we exercise authority. The place of prayer is a place where we address issues. You know, some people would prefer to complain about it or cry about it or mumble concerning it. But prayer is the key to enforcing our liberty over the situation. Hallelujah. Amen. And in, in church, when I say in church, I'm talking about you. In church that is not praying, a believer that is not praying is expected to be defeated by the things that happen around him or her. When people are not praying, they're in the mercy of their circumstances. As we pray, we push back every satanic force. There are satanic force, forces that come to contain with dreams, with visions, with instruction that God has already given to a person. There are forces that come to contain with that instruction from God. You can look at someone, a very beautiful girl, and you know she has a bright future. But if she's not in a place of prayer, that bright future can turn into an ugly future. Praise God. You can look at a young man, and you can tell that this young man will have a bright future. If he's not in the place of prayer, that bright future can turn into an ugly future. There is something about prayer that helps you monitor your future and experience God's will for your life. There is something about prayer. As we pray, it helps us to stay connected to the will of God. As we pray, your primary responsibility is to build a healthy prayer life. Is to build it. Some people say, I don't have time to pray. That means I will not have time to deal with issues they never expected. You, you, you have to take one. It's either you want to be in the place of prayer and subdue situations, or you are not in the place of prayer and no situations subdue you. You can't be in the train. Because when we begin to pray, you're quick to receive understanding. Especially when you're praying the Spirit. 
There are things to bind. There are forces to bind. Doing things that you may wonder, what is wrong with that? What is wrong with them? And most of these people sometimes are not even conscious of what they do. But you see, when you begin to pray, it helps you to protect the future and also to experience the future. That is what it does for you. But Jesus, to spend hours in prayer, and because he spent hours in prayer, he was making power available for his assignment. You can't walk in the miraculous if you're not a personal prayer. There are certain financial blessings you cannot call into a century amount of prayer. I'm telling you. There are dimensions of prosperity you cannot experience except you're in the place of prayer. You know why? In the place of prayer, you receive revelation of what to do. In the place of prayer, you receive revelation of what to do. In the place of prayer, wisdom to deal with situations. How clear? You know, so this kind of going not except by fasting and prayer. There is something that prayer will do for you. There is something that happens when you begin to fast. To abstain from food, maybe for some few hours, and your fasting. You know, some people write that fasting is no longer part of their life. They prefer they are going to write, so they don't need to fast. But we need to fast. Hallelujah. We need to fast. Fasting is good for your health. Hallelujah. Fasting is good for you. If it was not good, Jesus would practice it. If fasting was not good, Jesus could have not practiced fasting. It's a way of life for a man of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You can live a fasted life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we pray, it is easy to achieve more. You know, some people, if you said that it's going to be a party, but we're going to eat and drink, you like things like that. But if you say let us pray for two hours, for three hours, for six hours, some people will have reasons. I'm attending this function, I'm attending that function. When you see people avoiding prayer, you have just seen someone that demons will keep messing up their life. So they mess up their marriage, mess up their children, mess up them. They'll be rising and suddenly something called them short. They are the ones that, that you hear the words of God from. Yeah, but also has the worst reports from. So if I'm truly going to make progress, I need to be in the place of prayer. Yeah, but also you hear all kinds of funny things about them. And because when you're not praying, your children is the thing always do. So do what? To pray. To pray. And not to faint, not to murmur, not to complain, not to nag, but to pray. Because when we are praying, we are engaging the realm of the Spirit to walk in our favor. Hallelujah. Huh? When we are praying, what it was, we are engaging the realm of the Spirit to walk in our favor. No. I, saw some, I was watching a movie some few days back. Listen to this. This, this, this is not my attention because I've I, I talked to my wife about it. This lady in the 
keeps moving. Love this young man so much. And the daughter was also in love with the guy. So both of them want to marry the guy. So they want to answer. So the mother of the girl brought in a kind of a, a person who is into ritual, into witchcraft. And because the guy was wounded because of the fight that happened in the movie, and the, the neighbor brought the guy to his house, the mother of this girl, and brought in this guy who is into witchcraft. And this guy brought both of them their pictures. And he started speaking words. Now, I was telling my world, my this is how it works in the realm of the spirit, that, that everything we do, we do with what? With words. So, in times, the picture got something like oh, a red thread, and was finding it and was speaking words, was speaking words, then started pouring something on it and was trying to put them together spiritually. He did all of that. I was watching all he was doing. Then this is what happened. The guy was not born again. Now they were trying to get out of the lady. Both of them are not the young ladies, according to the movie. But did you know that the guy which is set Neil, not the Holy Ghost with them, never bound to that thing? I said, look at this guy. He's not born again. And someone is tying him, but he never walked. You know where he never walked? I will explain to you. Because life is spiritual, there are certain people, as a result of the level of their yielding to another state, even in the demonic world, you are rounds. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Even in the demonic world, there are rounds. And the lady was surprised that everything this man did to put him and this guy together never worked. So she resolved to use a gun to kill the guy. <laughs> Since the witchcraft will work. <laughs> <laughs> Raise that. <God. laughs> Say the witchcraft is not going to work. Then I said, for the trait of God that is born again, it's a new sort of redemption. That someone tied your future and kept on the wall. We pray, we 
decide our future. And we pray. When I hear Christians say he's possessed with demons, I say, what do you mean that? <laughs> because when I swear to be possessed by demons, hallelujah, you expect to reign over demons and evil spirits. But the evil spirit begins to reign over the person, it means they are not living according to God's word. They are not accepted the responsibility to do the work. And let me say this to you. Sin will open the door for evil spirits. One of the very easy ways for evil spirits to get into the lives of people is to sin. Especially when the person continues in that lifestyle of sin. When a person continues their lifestyle of sin, it's opening up for evil spirits. Hallelujah. There are people today that are bothered with addictions. And they didn't know how it started. Maybe they just let me go watch this, then let me just watch this, let me go watch that, let me go watch this, let me go read this. Hallelujah. Let me just read this. There are people that started reading some books, and because this, because whenever you read a book, you're also making contact with the spirit of who in that book. People don't know this. When you are reading something, you're making a contact. What the spirit is a prayer. Someone said, Lord, just the word. Not just the word. If you're not praying, that word will not be effective. Prayer makes that word effective. Prayer makes the word of God effective in the life. I said, prayer makes God's word effective in the life. You can never say, oh, I'm a master of prayer. I don't like to read the word of God. No, you need to have knowledge to enjoy redemption. You need to have knowledge to do what? To enjoy redemption. You can't truly really enjoy redemption except in the place of prayer. As we pray, I can remember what God told me many years ago. He said, the more you pray, the more you see. There's a word from God to me. He said, the more you pray, the more you see. See what? There are things you won't be able to see with these your eyes. There are visions, there are, you know, I had an experience, God was showing something with me and then decided to prove it to me in several ways. There are things you can't see. I bet someone who said that I don't have dreams. I'm not dreaming. I've never someone that said she has not dreamt before. Whether she has not whether she has not dreamt before. That was it's very rare for her to dream. Very, very rare. It's very rare for her to see dreams or visions of things. Very rare for her. But there are people who regularly see things. Before things will go wrong, they will see it. How did they get to that point? If you don't train your spirit, you'll be ignorant of the spiritual activities taking place around you. That is why people died. She was healthy this morning, but she slumped in the evening and died. How did that happen? The paralysis was coming, she didn't see it. Death was coming, you didn't see it. You're supposed to see it. As you pray, the more sensitive you are to God and to the things of the Spirit, you're quick to understand the activities that are going on in the realm of the Spirit. And then you can be able to bind or lose their activities going on. You're in this situation that you don't know what someone is saying about you. Maybe someone is saying some things about you. Maybe 
have found your job, maybe I found your life, and someone is maybe putting some words and someone has said, don't have a job support. How do you deal with things you don't hear? The things you don't hear, you address them in the place of prayer. You address them. Things you don't hear. Words spoken against you. There are people who just place people on their cats without them knowing it. And if you're not in the place of prayer, those things prevail. Oh? But if you're in the place of prayer, there are certain things that witchcraft that people try to put on you or to put around your children, around your family, is not going to be successful. Because you know how to deal with it. I cannot be cursed. I will never see somebody that will cost me as a bike. He will never be. I can't be cursed. I don't. You can walk to a way, go to a point, you are above cursed from men. Because it's men who place cursed on men. It's all the other ones already. It's men who place cursed on men. It's men, and men place this case when they are angry. Or when something never got done to the way they start placing case. But you can walk with God to a point, and people can place case on people because of envy. That's what I'm saying. When someone is envious, and maybe see this person prospering, or making progress, they can decide to say, that which she's doing cannot be last. They are just saying it. This will not be last. Yeah, you are putting your words on it, and if that person is not spiritually minded, two weeks later they are packing it up. And you don't know why they packed it up. But if you spread it spread with God, it will come on crossing. Eh? That word may not be dictionary. But I want you to explain it. I'm not teaching English. I want you to understand what I'm saying. It will come what? On crossing. I know. Hmm? Somebody spoke that one and you put it in English. Let me come that one. Or person, you become a person. That nobody, you know, he said to Abraham, I blessed you. He said, Let that bless you. It's blessed. Hallelujah. Those are the people whose mission is the test. And they're not spiritually minded. Such people, their wives, can hurt your dream. Hallelujah. There are people that were walking in the company and maybe they left the company and someone spoke and said they will look for a job until they get tired. And from that day, no job answers. You know, life is spiritual. And this is why we need to burn those vibes. Those words spoke from the atmosphere. People can be getting married and, and someone brings them in the gift of witchcraft. How do we say we got married and we got 10 years no child? And we have been going all over the place. I knew it, man. For more than 20, 20 something years. No child until he died. No child. Because life is spiritual. Give time or no future. Give time or wasted. Give time or destroyed. Give time or ruined. Who ruined them? What? Not a particular family in my, in my community. And it looked like everybody was coming out from that family was great people. Like the man who wants to say thanks for our past. All the key players in that family needs to die one after the other like that. They were, they were they like a tree just causing them, causing them. And before they die, most of them go broke first. You need to live a life of prayer is because there are things you will not understand with your natural mind, but in the place of prayer you are addressing it. 
You know, look for a thing in one of those words. The stuff going down. Imagine sending his son to school. And that was the last time they had a basketball. Look for him everywhere. Nobody knows where he is. And it's messed up. People losing their loved ones. You can't find them. They are gone everywhere. Gone to the police. You know, missing. People just think a good day. You don't know who, you don't know where they are either. But there was something about prayer that prevents things from coming. There are people coming, but as you're in the place of prayer, you are praying.
There are things you have to deal with. As you pray, things will break. Are you ready? Let's rise to our feet. I'm praying this way. It was Shantalabara. 